coming up on today's edition of Vikings Now by Chat Sports. I got five big time trade targets for our Minnesota Vikings. As after the 4 0 start, and with this smirk on Quazy's face, I don't know what it is about this photo. I just always feel like he's up to something. Maybe the Vikings could go all in and trade for, you know, potentially five of the better players in the NFL. I'll tell you guys those five names here in a second, but also later on today's show with this matchup against the New York Jets. Even though I do think the Vikings should steamroll. I just want to go over some of my top matchups to watch in that game. But before we dive into all that, we're closing in on 34K. And I was trying to think, who is my favorite Vikings player to wear 34 in the history of this franchise? It's got to be Zendejo. Anytime I think about him, I think about me being so furious with his play leading into that Saints playoff game, you know, the Minneapolis miracle game. And then this dude had one of the best interceptions I've ever seen. Falling back, he was in a deep half. Breeze was trying to take a shot over the top. And Zendejo is backpedaling. He skies up for it. It was just an unbelievable play. So if you guys want more around your Minnesota Vikings, you want to help our cause here at Chat Sports, hit that subscribe button for my man Zendejo. And let's uh, dive into some trade targets here. So we got to be talking about the cap space. Because if you're trading for a big-time player, an all-in type of move, you got to be able to take on their contract. Well, the Vikings... They got $14.2 uh, $14 million to spend, and you could also restructure some deals if you really need to create more cap space. But let's dive into everybody's number one trade target for this football team. And I hate to break it for you guys, but it's, this one's unlikely. But if this would ever you know, have a chance to come to fruition, he would be my number one trade target, and that being Dexter Lawrence at still only 26 years old. So what has he done so far this season? Well, he's been probably the best – defensive lineman not even just from the interior but the best defensive lineman in the NFL this year 12 tackles two TFLs three sacks he has been that wrecking ball in the middle of that Giants defensive line and you know if you guys remember week one who absolutely game wrecked that game for the Giants it was Dexter Lawrence like he was ragdolling Garrett Bradbury and Ed Ingram all day long and his contract like if the Vikings are trading for this guy, this is a steal of a deal. I will give Joe Shane and the Giants front office credit here. Like, getting Dexter Lawrence on this contract is fantastic. $14.5 million this year. So the Vikings could easily take that on. 2025, 20, 24.2, 26, 27, 2027, 26 million. I would love this deal for the Minnesota Vikings. I say all that to say this. The Giants aren't trading Dexter Lawrence. I, I would love to get up on here every single week and be like, the Vikings need the trade for Dexter Lawrence. It's just not going to happen. Like, the Giants are in a spot where they view Dexter Lawrence, Andrew Thomas, Malik Neighbors as they're like three blue chippers for this team, very similar to us Vikings fans. You know, view Jefferson, Christian Derisaw, you know, Kevin O'Connell as kind of like our building blocks. They view Dexter Lawrence as that. Maybe the Vikings throw them a first and a third or, you know, some crazy offer, and they have to say yes, but I don't think Quazy's going to get, you know, a little too aggressive in doing that. But, you know, I would love Dexter Lawrence. Giants aren't trading him, though. But a realistic dream target for our Minnesota Vikings, how about the big fella from Tennessee, Jeffrey Simmons, who is still only 27 years old, and he's off to another great start to the year, man. Uh, he is fantastic. He plays with a ton of energy. You know, he's just truly a – Truly a, like, I don't know what word I'm looking for. Like, like yeah, he's a game wrecker, like, no doubt about it. But he just brings energy. Like, contagious energy is what he brings, was what I was uh, trying to say there. But, you know, he's been fantastic to start this season. He's been fantastic for the last four years in the NFL. And, you know, in terms of trading for an interior defensive lineman, I think that would be the one spot where the Vikings are a little weak at uh, defensively. Like, I love the linebackers, love the edge, love the corners, you know, love the safeties, but training for a blue chipper at the D-line spot, that would be a perfect fit, and his contract's not bad. Now, for this year, uh, this year you would have to rework some deals to make this $21.6 million cap hit work. Same with 25, 26, 27. You guys see the figures up on screen. But again, paying this amount of uh, money for a guy who is truly a top five at his position – I'm taking it, and plus, it would add a sense of physicality to that defensive line, which I still feel like the Vikings need, even though they have been very physical this year. But you add Jeffrey Simmons. I mean, that's icing on the cake. So that's why we're going to talk about three more names. 
And we talked about Dexter Lawrence, but with Lawrence being unlikely, Jeffrey Simmons is my official dream trade target. Now, I wouldn't want the Vikings to, you know, go all out and give up a first and like a future third for him. But if you could somehow get him for next year's first and maybe a fifth or something like that, I would do it. Because also, that pick for the Vikings is probably going to be about 25, 26 in this year's uh, upcoming NFL draft. But, you know, the Vikings need a blue chipper on defense. They're a very deep and talented football team, but they don't have a true superstar. Jeffrey Simmons is that. I And if the Vikings were trade for him, man, like this defense would actually have a chance to be one of the best ones of all time. I fully, fully believe that. But talking about another defensive player here, Marshawn Lattimore, as this has been a big-time name that has been floated in some big-time rumors over the last couple of years. As the Saints cap space situation is ugly and they're going to try to move off him um, just for they can open up some more money on their books next year. But, you know, Lattimore, he has some injury concerns. And you guys see the games played up on screen like – Seven games in 22, 23 only played 10, and even this year he's already been in and out of the lineup due to injuries. But when he is healthy and he is out there, he is one of the better cornerbacks in the league. And you think about that London game a couple years ago, uh, funny enough that the Vikings are heading back to London this week. Like, he actually did a good job on Jefferson. Um, I always felt like Lattimore and Jair Alexander are the two best corners in terms of guarding Jefferson in the league. But why I say no, this. Um... You know, 14.6 this year, not bad for, you know, a pretty good cornerback. But I'll tell you what, guys, if we trade for Lattimore, it will be really, really fun this year. But then we're going to talk about him this offseason, and we're going to see that cap hit of $31.4 million. Saints front office, are you kidding me with this? This is a terrible deal. Um, and then 28.6 the year after. So, you know, Lattimore is a great player, but absolutely not. I don't think the Vikings should, so I'm pass on Marshawn Lattimore. Great player, just – no, injury concerns, bad contract. I'm not doing it. But a guy the Vikings could trade for who has – I'm going to call a spade a spade here. Emmanuel Forbes has been awful to start his NFL career. He is already looking like a bust. Um, uh, like Emmanuel Forbes is one of those guys where I think the Vikings were to trade for him. They're viewing him as a project. And maybe it's like a random six-round pick, fifth-round pick, where he was a former first-round pick just a couple years ago. Um, maybe you take a chance on him, very athletic – cornerback you know very very tall so I could see that maybe the Vikings a uh, taking a chance on him but again you know we'll have to wait and see but the last one on my list is one that I'm going to be asked about and you know it makes sense that the Vikings are playing him this weekend but I'd probably throw this in the Dexter Lawrence category of no freaking way this is going to happen but the only way I think he could potentially be available and I hate wishing injury upon anyone but let's just say Aaron Rodgers like, let's just say the Vikings beat the Jets this weekend and it's a disaster and the, you know, Jets look terrible. And let's just say Rodgers, he gets reported he's out for like two to three months or he could be out for the year. Then I could see a fire sale happening for New York because they have really gone all in and maybe they'll try to, you know, get some of it back with trading the stud. But, you know, there's no doubt Dex or Quentin Williams is, you know, him, Dexter Lawrence, and Jeffrey Simmons are the three best interior defensive linemen in the league. I mean, in 2022, from the interior, him getting 12 sacks is unbelievable. And plus, what I like about Quinnen Williams is that, you know, the Jets already have him on the books. Now, yes, his contract is a little bigger than Jeffrey Simmons, especially in 2027. But, you know, I still think Quinnen Williams, like him even at this price point, is still a good deal. Now, you know, here are the numbers exactly, like 2025, 21 million, 26, 26 million, and 2027, 30 million you know, it's not the most team-friendly deal, but again, like if you trade for a blue chipper, I, I would be all in. But overall, I I want the Vikings to trade for an interior defensive lineman. You know, not going all in on this, but you know, I could I could see the crazy getting very very aggressive. But you guys, let me know. I just gave you guys five names. You guys just got to give me one name. A player you want the Vikings to trade for? Drop that name in the comment section. Curious to see what you guys have to say. All right, let's dive into some of the top matchups this Sunday versus the Chats. We're going to start off with this one, Jefferson versus Sauce Gardner. Now, I am hoping that Robert Sala almost has too much faith in Sauce Gardner, and he says, you know what, Sauce? We trust you this weekend. You go one-on-one -on -one with Jefferson all game long. We call this the 18 effect around here. If he's one-on-one, -on -one, it's simple, guys. You throw him the football. He's getting all the coverage. He's getting the safety help. You throw it to the other guys. It's simple because this man's unguardable, and he's been the best receiver in the National Football League for another year. 20 receptions, 358 yards on the season, found the end zone in every single game so far. So I'm hoping we get to see the gritty. 
this Sunday uh, in London. He's also averaging 17.9 uh, yards per catch a season, which is great for Justin Jefferson. And also that long of 97 yards, that was just sick. But also Jefferson, like maybe why they won't be able to move Sauce all around the lot with him is you don't know where he's going to line up. Sauce, are you down to hop in the slot and follow Jefferson there? We'll have to wait and see. He runs out of there 34% of the time. Out wide, 63% of the time. So Jefferson's moving all over the place. But, you know, Sauce is a very good cornerback. I don't want to take anything away from him. Um, but he's just not on the level of Justin Jefferson. I don't think there is a corner in the NFL that you can truly leave one-on-one -on -one for the entire game. Maybe a guy like Pat Sertan, but that's just about it. A guy like Sauce, who's unbelievable, top five corner, you leave him one-on-one, -on -one, you will get burned. So Robert Sala, if you're watching this, Sauce Gardner can't guard Jefferson one-on-one. -on -one. Come prove me wrong. Make me look like an idiot. I'm hoping, I'm hoping the Jets uh, coaching staff decide to do that. But Let's get into number two here. Quentin Williams versus the interior offensive line. Now, I am actually concerned about this matchup because um, Quentin Williams is a disruptor. Like, he is a game wrecker. And I think when you have a guy who can get pressure from the interior, you know, quarterbacks just don't like pressure at their feet. Normally when that pressure comes from the interior, they're right at their knees. So, you know, Quentin is definitely a guy where – Vikings are going to have to double team or triple team them, but I liked what they did last week on Kenny Clark. They just chipped a tight end and running back for both tackles on big time third downs, and then they used the three interior offensive linemen just to focus on the two interior defensive linemen. So I'm expecting the same this weekend against Williams, but you know, Ed Ingram's going to have his hands full, and you know, he has been playing better the last couple of weeks, but he's going to need to bring his A game because last time he went against a very, very elite defensive lineman he got cooked and that was Dexter Lawrence but following that he's been fantastic now Blake Brandell he's been good as well um 75.8 overall grade he's been really good at the left guard spot so I'm really looking at Bradbury and Ingram if they'll be able to you know hang on and slow down Quentin Williams just a little bit but this is my favorite matchup of the whole weekend this is the funniest matchup in my opinion because it is a mismatch it is Kevin O'Connell versus uh Bobby Sala there in New York and <laughs> the Vikings are going to win this game because of this matchup. Kevin O'Connell could have – he could have – who's like a decent college football team is not great. Kevin O'Connell could have USC this season, and we could go into London and beat the New York Jets because of Robert Sala being the other head coach. I think this is one of the biggest coaching mismatches we will see in the league this year. I think Sala is a terrible you know, overall head coach. I don't think he's a great defensive play caller. And on the opposite hand – Kevin O'Connell, he's a great culture guy. He's a great leader, and he's one of the smartest offensive minds in the league. The Vikings beat the Jets because Kevin O'Connell kicks Robert Sala's ass in the coaching department. Now, we'll get to two more matchups here in a second, but it is getting colder in Minnesota this time of year, and if you guys want to get a Vikings hoodie, click this link, chatsports.com slash Vikings hoodie. Um, I'll put that link for you guys in the comment section and description, but they got hoodies up to 50% off right here. So if you guys want to help support the show, get some more Vikings merchandise in your life, chatsports.com slash Vikings hoodie. Matchup number four for me is Jordan Addison versus DJ Reed. So, the Jets don't just have one good corner. They have two really, really good corners. Now, I will say when the Jets came to Minnesota a couple of years ago when the Vikings won 13-plus games, uh, DJ Reed had a hell of a game. And I will give him credit, but that time when he played the Vikings, they didn't have this man right here, Jordan Addison, who, you know, he looked great against the Packers, went for 70-plus yards, found the end zone two times. You know, he doesn't have a drop this season. And he's actually been emerging as a big-time deep threat. Like, his A dot is 17 yards. That's incredible um, just in terms of how explosive he has been and really what type of routes the Vikings are allowing him to run this season. But he will have a tough matchup with DJ Reed. And DJ Reed's been off to a great start this season. PFF grades him out as an 85.6 overall grade, and his coverage grade is 88.6. You see this right here, run defense, 65.3. Not bad by any means, but let's run at DJ Reed. Let's run at Sauce Gardner. Let's get to the outside. Let's make these corners for New York tackle because I just think they want to cover. I don't think they want to play a physical brand of football. So I'd run a lot of outside zone, get, uh, get DJ Reed in a hole with Aaron Jones and see if he's having fun in London. But number five for me, Stephon Gilmore versus Garrett Wilson. Now, I don't know who's going to get the Garrett Wilson assignment. I'm assuming it's going to be – I, the reason why I think it's Gilmore is I think he's going to run a lot of trail coverage and just have that safety be over the top the entire time. So 
that's why I think I'm going to lean Gilmore. And plus, Gilmore has been awesome this year. The fact that his run defense grade is 90.6, he has been awesome stepping up, making plays, but then also in coverage, he's been great. I'm waiting for the Gilmore interception. He's been close a couple of times this season. So, you know, hopefully you will get it done this Sunday, but definitely a good test, you know, going against Garrett Wilson and crew over there in New York. But if you guys made it to the end of today's show, give me a scroll down below in the comment section. Um, so I can tell where all the real ones are at. Then also my Twitter, at Pat Seeps. Give me a follow over there if you guys haven't already. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, Skull Bikes.